today the topic for the discussion is inferior alveolar nerve block nerve anesthetized include the inferior alveolar nerve mental nerve incisal nerve lingual as well as proximal nerves the areas anesthetized by this nerve block include the mandibular teeth that are present in that quadrant the body of the mandible inferior portion of the ramus are also anesthetized the buccal mucoporostium the mucous membrane anterior to the mental foramen are also anesthetized when considering the tongue the anterior to third of the tongue as well as the floor of the oral cavity on that respective quadrant is anesthetized lingual soft tissues and periosteum that are being supplied by the lingual nerve are also anesthetized by this nerve block the anatomical landmarks include the mucobuccal fold the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible external oblique ridge retromolar triangle internal oblique ridge Tarigomandibular ligament, buccal sacrum pad, and tarigomandibular space. The indications of this plot include procedures including multiple mandibular teeth that needs to be operated or extracted in one quadrant, and buccal soft tissue anesthesia whenever required. when lingual soft tissue anesthesia is necessary then also this block is indicated whereas the contraindications include infection or acute inflammation in the area of injection in patients who are more likely to bite their lip or tongue such as a very young child or physically or mentally handicapped adult or child when proceeding with this nerve block the needle passes through various structures that include the mucosa a thin plate of proximal muscle loose connective tissue and a variable amount of fat whereas when the needle is in final position of the block it lies anteriorly to the deep part of parotid gland superior to the inferior alveolar vessels and nerve in insertion of internal pterygoid muscles and mylohyoid vessels and nerve whereas it is present medially to the inner part of the ramus of the mandible whereas laterally it is present to the lingual nerve internal pterygoid muscles and sphenomandibular ligament now we will discuss about the technique how to proceed with this nerve block First of all, the head should be positioned in such a way, when the patient is opening the mouth, the body of the mandible is parallel to the floor. The operator stands to the right front side of the patient, with the left index finger or the thumb palpating the mucobuccal fold. The finger of the thumb is then moved posteriorly until contact is made with the external oblique ridge or anterior border of the ramus of the mandible. After doing so, we are supposed to move our finger up and down so that we can find out the greatest depth of the anterior border of the mandible. The significance for the same is that by diagrammatically or anatomically studies, we have found out that the mandibular foramen lies exactly at the level of the deepest portion or the coronoid notch. then the palpating finger is moved lingually across the retromolar triangle and onto the internal oblique ridge while the finger is still in the line with the coronoid notch and in contact with the internal oblique ridge it is moved towards the buccal side by doing so we get a better exposure to the internal oblique ridge tarigomandibular raphe as well as the perigotemporal depression 
A syringe is then inserted parallel to the occlusion floor of the mandibular teeth from the opposite side of the mouth at the level by setting the, the finger or the thumbnail and penetrating the tissues of the pterygium and mandibular depression and entering the pterygium mandibular space. The needle is penetrated into the tissues until gently contracting the bone on the internal surface of the ramus of the mandible. After doing so, we are supposed to retract the needle for about 1 mm and 1 to 1.8 ml of solution is deposited slowly in the area. The needle is withdrawn slowly and then after half of it is out of it or we have retracted it to the half of it depth, the remainder solution is injected in the area to anesthetize the lingo nerve. In this diagram, we can very well appreciate the final position of the needle while performing the inferior alveolar nerve block. In the second figure, we get an orientation of the presence of mandibular foramen in relation to the coronoid notch, that is the deepest portion of the anterior portion of the ramus of the mandible. In this diagram or the figure, we are showing the performance of the inferior alveolar nerve block in a patient as well as coordinated with it with a tri skirt. Symptoms of the effectiveness of the nerve block includes the subjective and the objective signs and symptoms. That includes subjective symptoms include the tingling and numbness of the lower lip following with the tip of the tongue and the objective signs. There is absence of pain demonstration when the instrumentation is performed on that particular patient. So this brings to the end of the lecture telling about various aspects of inferior alveolar nerve